I'm Mike Stanton with Build America Mutual. It's January 28th. This is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Update. I'm here with Brian Babler and Morgan Fahey from BAM's Capital Markets Desk. Uh, thank you for being here with us. Um, Brian, we'll uh, turn to you first. A really interesting week in the markets. Uh, yields continued their march upward. We start to see retail investors reacting. What uh, were you keeping an eye on? Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a bit of a ride this week <laughs> uh, in lots of markets, uh, treasuries and equities alike. Um, you know, the biggest news this week, obviously, was the FOMC rate decision, um, which uh, they decided to keep the Fed fund rates unchanged, um, but they added language in the statement uh, that it will soon be appropriate to, uh, to raise the target rate. Uh, in addition to that, they, uh, they continued to reduce the monthly uh, pace of net asset purchases uh, and expect to bring them to an end uh, in early March. Um, it wasn't in writing, but in his comments, uh, Fed Chair Powell also said that um, that balance sheet reduction uh, would not begin until the process of raising interest rates was in place, uh, and that the committee would, uh, you know, would would begin to talk about that over the next few meetings. Um, so, uh, you know, with a lot of intraday swings um, in in all sorts of asset classes. Uh, you know, we saw a flattening of the Treasury curve, uh, unsurprisingly, with, uh, you know, with some of the language that was in the statement. Uh, Two-year Treasury uh, sold off about 17 basis points over the week. Um, it's, uh, it's right around a 117 now. But at the end of the day uh, and at the end of the week, um, you know, longer Treasury rates really aren't all that, um, all that unchanged. Um, again, big intraday swings, a, a decent sell-off on Wednesday afternoon after the statement. But then rallies yesterday and today, um, you know, just really ended the uh, the tenure around a 178. Uh, that hit as high as a 187 um, on Wednesday afternoon, uh, and the 30 year right now is around a 208. So really not all that different from uh, from where we um, where we started the week. But on the muni side, uh, we continued to underperform. Um, you know, this was really uh, the first big outflow week. Uh, we saw about a billion four. In, uh, in, fu uh, in fund flows out of tax exempts. Um, and even in the lack of, uh, of real, you know, any substantial supply, uh, we did see some pressure, uh, some selling pressure in the market, um, solidly above a billion in bid wanteds uh, for three or four of the days of this week. Um, so that did put some pressure on liquidity. Um, and we saw if, if we, as we're recording this, uh, the read on uh, the late day read on MMD is cuts of, uh, of eight to 10 basis points. If you add that to the moves that, uh, that we've already made, um, that would bring week over week shift uh, in the MMD curve as much as 20 to 25 basis points um, for, you know, kind of call it six uh, or 10 years on out, um, and as much as 30, uh, 30 basis points uh, in two to five years. Um, you know, you add that to last week's adjustments uh, and munis were off as much as 30 to 35 basis points out long, uh, 40 to 45 basis points, five years and in. And that brings year to date moves as much as 40 to 50 basis points higher uh, uh, out long and, and uh, 60 to 70 basis points in the front end. So we've seen a real adjustment in a fairly short amount of time. Um, it doesn't feel like that's abating uh, anytime soon. There's, you know, there's not a ton of supply next week, so it's not like uh, supply will put a lot of added pressure. But if we continue to see uh, outflows uh, in this environment, uh, it could certainly uh, continue to pressure the muni market. And one piece of feedback we are hearing from the market is that that money's not necessarily going to other markets. There's a lot of money moving into cash, sitting on the sidelines, waiting to see where the dust settles. Because as you've said, there's been tremendous volatility in other markets as well. Mm -hmm. We'll see how that plays out in the uh, coming weeks. Uh, Morgan, in the uh, new issue market, uh, as, as Brian said, supply was uh, overall has to be considered manageable, uh, less than $10 billion. What kind of transactions did you see uh, come across the screen? Yep. Um, we saw a little over $7.5 billion in supply this week with BAM pricing about $395 million across 26 series in the primary market. Um, our activity this week was across nine states, which was a nice mix for us, and just kind of a couple of deals to highlight here. Um, first one being 70 million Crete Monet School District, Illinois, which is across four series priced by Huntington, a 59 million Rockford School District, Illinois deal priced by Stiefel, and a 38 million University of Idaho deal priced by Wells Fargo. Um, and as we look to next week, we expect the calendar to be just under 9 million, with BAM looking to be pricing about 150 million thus far. 
Um, just a few deals to highlight um, as we move into next week. Seafold's pricing 44 million Elkhart County, Indiana. Raymond James is going to be pricing 22 million of the city of Jasper, Alabama. And Samco is going to be pricing 22 million uh, Northwest Harris Mud number 10. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, how the market digests the supply next week, uh, especially if we continue to see, you know, the moves that we've been seeing. And all three of us are here in the New York area. We're bracing for a big snowstorm. Could be a blizzard in the next couple of days. I couldn't help but notice on the calendar that next week, uh, BAM is scheduled to ensure uh, the Coachella Valley Water Authority out in California. So uh, thinking of slightly warmer temperatures and maybe a uh, summer back out on the uh, music scene uh, might be a little bit of a more uh, favorable environment than the uh, next uh, 48 hours here. So thanks for your time, guys, today. Uh, we'll talk to you next week. Thanks, thanks Mike. Mike.